On the morning of April 19, 1995, an ordinary day in Oklahoma City turned into a horrifying chapter of American history. As the heartland stirred to life, no one could have anticipated the cataclysm that was about to unfold. In the bustling downtown area, the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building stood as a symbol of the federal government's presence. Employees were settling into their workday, parents were dropping off their children at the second floor daycare center, and passers-by were going about their routines. But at precisely 9 o'clock, a colossal explosion ripped through the heart of the city, transforming the federal building into a pile of rubble. The blast was so powerful, it shattered glass in buildings over a 16-block radius, raining shards onto the streets below. The shockwave was felt miles away, a chilling testament to the destructive force that had been unleashed. In those first moments of chaos and confusion, the scale of the tragedy was yet to be fully comprehended. Emergency services sprang into action, racing against time to reach those trapped beneath the wreckage. Volunteers poured in from across the city and beyond, their selfless acts of bravery offering a glimmer of hope amid the devastation. Yet, as the dust settled, the harsh reality began to sink in. The Oklahoma City bombing was no accident but a deliberate act of domestic terrorism. It was a cold, calculated strike against the very heart of America, designed to sow fear and discord. The heartland, known for its warm hospitality and quiet resilience, was plunged into mourning. But even in the face of such unspeakable horror, the spirit of the community remained unbroken. They rallied together, united in their grief and their determination to overcome this dark chapter. In a matter of seconds, 168 lives were lost, more than 500 people were injured, and the heartland of America was forever changed. This was the day that shook the heartland, a day that would be etched into the nation's memory, a stark reminder of the cost of freedom and the enduring strength of the American spirit. The bombing wasn't a random act of violence, it was a meticulously planned act of domestic terrorism. The seeds of this terror were sown long before the morning of April 19, 1995. The deadly plot was in the making for months, if not years, as the perpetrators harbored their hatred and plotted their revenge against what they perceived as government overreach. In the autumn of 1994, a former soldier named Timothy McVeigh and his accomplice Terry Nichols began their preparations. They acquired and stockpiled the necessary materials, ammonium nitrate fertilizer, diesel fuel and other chemicals, to create a lethal bomb. The planning was done with chilling precision, the materials collected covertly, and the weapon of mass destruction assembled quietly. Fast forward to April 17, two days before the bombing. McVeigh rented a yellow rider truck from a rental agency in Junction City, Kansas. The truck, unbeknownst to anyone, would soon become a deadly weapon the vehicle of mass destruction. On the morning of April 19th, McVeigh parked the yellow rider truck filled with explosives in front of the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. It was a regular workday, and the building was bustling with federal employees. A daycare center on the second floor was filled with children. At precisely 9 o'clock, the explosion ripped through the nine-story Federal Building. The blast was so powerful it damaged or destroyed over 300 buildings within a 16-block radius. The devastation was immediate and horrifying. The Murrah building was reduced to a pile of rubble, trapping those who were unlucky enough to be inside. In the immediate aftermath of the explosion, the city was in chaos. Emergency services were overwhelmed. Firefighters, police officers, and ordinary citizens rushed to the scene, forming a spontaneous rescue team. They dug through the rubble with their bare hands, looking for survivors, pulling out the injured, and, tragically, retrieving the bodies of those who didn't make it. Meanwhile, McVeigh was already on the run, but his freedom was short-lived. Just 90 minutes after the bombing, he was pulled over by an Oklahoma state trooper for driving without a license plate. He was arrested on a firearms charge and taken into custody. Back in Oklahoma City, the rescue efforts continued day and night. The days blurred into nights, the nights into days. The nation watched in horror and disbelief as the death toll continued to rise. The final count. 168 lives lost, including 19 children and hundreds more injured. The timeline of the Oklahoma City bombing is a chilling chronicle of terror, one that unfolded with alarming precision. Behind the devastation were two American citizens driven by a dangerous ideology. This chilling truth unravels as we delve deeper into the twisted minds that orchestrated the Oklahoma City bombing. The perpetrators, Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols, were not foreign terrorists but homegrown radicals fueled by anti-government sentiments. 
Timothy McVeigh, a decorated Army veteran, was the primary architect of the bombing. Born in New York in 1968, McVeigh had a troubled childhood. His parents divorced when he was 10 and he spent most of his adolescence living with his father in Pendleton, New York. A social outcast, McVeigh found comfort in guns and began developing a fascination with explosives at an early age. After high school, McVeigh enlisted in the United States Army. He served in the Gulf War, where he was decorated for his bravery. However, his time in the military also exposed him to the darker aspects of warfare and government actions. McVeigh left the army in 1991, disillusioned and increasingly radicalized. Terry Nichols, on the other hand, was a drifter from Michigan. Born in 1955, Nichols had a series of failed relationships and businesses. He found solace in radical anti-government literature, which fueled his growing resentment towards the federal government. The paths of these two men crossed in the early 90s. They met at a gun show and quickly bonded over their shared ideologies. Their friendship evolved into a dangerous partnership, driven by their mutual hatred for the government and a desire to spark a revolution. Their motivations were rooted in a toxic mix of conspiracy theories, anti-government sentiments, and extreme right-wing ideologies. Both men were deeply affected by events like the Ruby Ridge standoff and the Waco siege, viewing them as evidence of government overreach and tyranny. They saw themselves. In the midst of the wreckage, stories of courage, resilience, and loss emerged. The Oklahoma City bombing wasn't just a headline or a statistic, it was a devastating event that left a permanent mark on the lives of hundreds of people. The blast claimed the lives of 168 people, including 19 children, and injured more than 500 others. Yet, amid the tragedy, stories of courage and resilience emerged, painting a picture of the indomitable spirit of humanity. Let's take a moment to honor some of these individuals, their stories a poignant reminder of the human cost of this act of terror. One such story is that of Dana Bradley. Dana was in the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building that fateful morning with her three children. The blast claimed the lives of her two youngest children and left Dana herself severely injured. Despite her loss and the physical challenges she faced, Dana refused to be defeated. She channeled her pain into action, becoming a vocal advocate for victims' rights and an inspiration to many. Then there's the story of Rebecca Anderson, an off-duty nurse who rushed to the scene of the devastation to help. Rebecca tirelessly administered aid to the injured, not caring for her own safety amidst the unstable wreckage. Tragically, she lost her life when a piece of debris struck her. Rebecca's selfless act of heroism is a testament to the extraordinary power of compassion and bravery in the face of overwhelming adversity. The bombing also left countless survivors grappling with the traumatic aftermath. Like Jim Denny, whose two children were in the second floor daycare center when the bomb detonated, both children survived, but they sustained serious injuries. Despite the emotional and physical toll, Jim and his wife Claudia devoted themselves to their children's recovery. Their story is a testament to the strength of familial love and the resilience it can foster. Each of these stories is a stark reminder of the human cost of the Oklahoma City bombing. Yet they also represent the incredible resilience and courage displayed by the victims and survivors. They refused to be defined by the act of terror that had befallen them. Instead, they chose to rise above it, demonstrating an inspiring strength and endurance. The survivors and the families of those who perished in the bombing had to navigate unimaginable grief and loss. Yet, they found ways to honor their loved ones and to ensure that those lost are not forgotten. Memorials were erected, scholarships established, and annual remembrance ceremonies held. These acts of commemoration serve as a poignant testament to the enduring legacy of those lost and the resilience of those left behind. Years later, the survivors continue to share their stories, their voices a powerful reminder of the human impact of this tragedy. They remind us that behind each name etched into the Oklahoma City National Memorial are real people, each with their own stories of courage, loss, and resilience. As we reflect on the Oklahoma City bombing, we are reminded of the profound strength and courage of the human spirit. The stories of the victims and survivors are not just tales of survival, they are narratives of resilience, of the capacity to endure, to heal, and to rise above adversity. We honor their strength, their courage, and their resilience. We remember those who were lost, and we stand in solidarity with those who survived. We are reminded that even in the face of unimaginable tragedy, the human spirit is capable of extraordinary resilience and strength. The resilience of the victims and survivors of the Oklahoma City bombing is a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity. 
The pursuit of justice was swift and unyielding. With the dust barely settled from the wreckage of the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building, law enforcement agencies from across the country converged on Oklahoma City. The FBI, ATF, local police, and even the Secret Service began piecing together the jigsaw puzzle of this horrific act. The first lead was a remnant of the bomb itself. A rear axle from the Ryder truck used in the bombing was found. The vehicle identification number, miraculously unscathed, led investigators to the rental agency and eventually to Timothy McVeigh. McVeigh had been apprehended earlier for a minor traffic violation and was still in jail when identified as a suspect. Meanwhile, the relentless pursuit of evidence led to Terry Nichols. Nichols had been known to McVeigh from their days together in the Army, and his anti-government sentiments echoed those of McVeigh. The investigation's meticulous nature turned up phone records, receipts, and witnesses that tied Nichols to the plot. The trials of McVeigh and Nichols were as dramatic as the events leading up to them. McVeigh was found guilty on 11 federal counts, including conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction. He was sentenced to death. Nichols, his co-conspirator, was found guilty on similar charges and received a life sentence without parole. In the face of such a horrific event, the resilience and unity of the Oklahoma City community were nothing short of remarkable. The city, once shattered, began to rebuild. The process of healing was long and arduous, but the community's spirit remained unbroken. The heartland of America demonstrated its strength in the face of adversity. The bombing's aftermath echoed far beyond the borders of Oklahoma. It served as a wake-up call for the entire nation, thrusting the reality of domestic terrorism onto center stage. In its wake, the government bolstered counterterrorism efforts, implementing new laws and regulations to prevent such an event from happening again. The Oklahoma City bombing had a profound impact on the nation's psyche. It changed the way the country approached security, law enforcement, and even the way we view our fellow citizens. It was a stark reminder that terrorism is not always an external threat, but can come from within our own borders. Yet, even amidst the tragedy, the bombing also highlighted the nation's capacity for compassion, resilience, and unity. In the days, weeks, and months following the bombing, the nation came together in a way that few could have anticipated. Americans from all walks of life rallied around Oklahoma City, offering support, donations, and words of comfort. Today, the Oklahoma City National Memorial stands on the grounds where the Murrah Building once stood. It's a solemn reminder of the lives lost and a testament to the resilience of a city and a nation. The memorial's inscription reads, We come here to remember those who were killed, those who survived, and those changed forever. May all who leave here know the impact of violence. May this memorial offer comfort, strength, peace, hope, and serenity. The Oklahoma City bombing was a tragic chapter in American history, a moment that shook the nation to its core. But it was also a moment that demonstrated the strength and resolve of the American people. It was a testament to our ability to endure, to rebuild, and to come together in times of crisis. The aftermath of the bombing brought the nation together in a united front against domestic terrorism. It served as a stark reminder of the threats we face as a nation, but also of the resilience, unity, and strength that define us as a people. Even in our darkest hours, we rise, we rebuild, and we remember. The Oklahoma City bombing was a pivotal moment in American history, one that continues to shape our understanding of domestic extremism. In the aftermath of this tragic event, we, as a nation, were forced to confront the harsh reality that terrorism was not an external threat alone, but a scourge that could fester in our very own neighborhoods. It was a wake-up call that led to a significant shift in our approach to domestic security and counterterrorism efforts. The bombing underscored the urgency of intensifying our focus on homegrown extremism. It spotlighted the fact that threats to our homeland could come not just from distant shores but from within our own borders. From this painful realization, a new resolve was born to better understand, monitor, and counteract domestic extremism. Our counterterrorism efforts underwent a significant transformation. Law enforcement agencies, both at the federal and state level, bolstered their intelligence gathering capabilities and increased their collaboration. The focus expanded from international threats to include those emerging from within, leading to a more comprehensive and effective approach to safeguarding our nation. But the lessons learned from the Oklahoma City bombing extended beyond security measures and counterterrorism strategies. This event highlighted the remarkable resilience of American society in the face of adversity. 
Despite the pain and the devastation, the spirit of unity, strength, and compassion that emerged from the rubble was astounding. The citizens of Oklahoma City, indeed the entire nation, rallied together, supporting one another through the recovery and rebuilding process. It was a testament to the unyielding spirit of the American people, a spirit that refuses to be broken by acts of violence or terror. The bombing also served as a stark reminder of the importance of community vigilance. The responsibility of maintaining security does not reside solely with law enforcement agencies. Each one of us, as members of our communities, has a role to play in ensuring the safety of our neighborhoods. By being alert to our surroundings and reporting any suspicious activities, we can contribute to the collective security of our nation. Remembering the Oklahoma City bombing is not just about honoring the memory of those lost. It is about understanding the lessons it taught us. It is about recognizing the strength that emerged from the tragedy and the changes it brought about. It is about reminding ourselves of the resilience that defines us as a nation and the unity that binds us together. We remember the Oklahoma City bombing not just as a tragic event, but as a call for vigilance, unity, and resilience in the face of terrorism. We remember it as a testament to our collective strength and our unyielding resolve to stand tall against any threat to our nation. We remember it with the hope that such a tragedy never repeats itself and with a commitment to do everything within our power to prevent it.